an emergency move and we're going to call this a pancake here and we want to use a pancake because our hand is flat on the ground so we're going to get in this defensive position here with our knees bent and balanced and our arms somewhere loose okay i don't think they should be bent i don't think that they should be up here i think they should be in a good neutral position so for the pancake what we want to work on here is big step big first step turn the knee out if your knee stays in you're going to land on your knee or you're going to hit your chin so turn the knee out helping hand which is really important for the pancake so if you're going to pancake with your right hand your left hand is a helping hand so it's big step knee turned out helping hand and then pancake here so we end up with this knee out pancake and the helping hand prevents us from hitting our chin on the floor okay so let's go in slow motion here so good and the helping hand there big step with the right helping hand with the left pancake flat okay good and I don't know if we want to push back I think we want to use this to catch ourselves so we don't hit our chin big step good okay but again this hand is a helping hand it's not pushing back it's helping so you don't smash your chin on the floor good just like that okay 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 good now let's use both hands we need left and a right hand so we need to use both so Kelly's got to practice to use her left hand okay and then good Lawrence good pancake there and we want to play the ball low obviously okay good um, so what we do at the beginning of practice on the whiteboard at the beginning of practice we may have on the whiteboard three pancakes left and right so again at the beginning of practice these are some of the the, the defensive movements that we've got to get really good at so um, again we'll have our liberos or all our players learn to pancake on their own without a ball and then we'll have the coach toss a ball and maybe we'll call this Pancake Academy here where we're going to have them go through this pancaking mo mo movement until they can all perform it. So we're going to... Okay, good. And we want to teach reading, same thing with defense. So even though this drill here is a basic drill, we still want them to read. Hey, get out of the way for a sec. So we're going to pancake here. Okay. Go, go, go. Good, nice try. Okay. And we're going to pancake here. Good, run. Okay, good. Get that hand out. And we're going to pancake here, but all of a sudden, Kelly's not reading. She's just running. So we, we're we not going to go until we know where the ball is going. So we're teaching the pancake, but we're not getting in this habit of just running until we know where it's going. So there, that's a pancake. And now it's a little tougher because she's reading instead of just... And I can mix it up. Okay, now, good. So now we're learning to play volleyball a little bit here. It's not just just running for a pancake. We're learning to play the game so that when we do put a pancake in, it's, it's more game-like because they don't know where the ball's going. And now Kelly's looking at me. Good, nice one with your left hand. And if you notice now, they're looking at me intently because they want to see where this ball is going to be hit. We're going to work on sprawling here, and I think this is the staple of our defensive movements right now. And again, with the sprawl, we want to be in a neutral position. I don't think we need to be this low, and I don't think we need to be tall, but again, in a good neutral position, knees bent and arms down. I like our arms in a comfortable position. So if the ball's hit to our right, we're going to step to our right, big step, play the ball low, create an angle, and then end up on our belly here. So, Kelly, do you want to, without a ball first. So big step, play the ball low, and then use your hands to catch you. You forgot how to sprawl? Step, play the ball, and good. So we want to go to our belly right now, not our butt here. So go, same thing, big first step, play the ball, go to our belly. So what we like about this movement here is more time is spent focusing on creating an angle where we want the ball to go, which is the target, and less time is focusing on other things. So we want to spend all our time focusing on playing the ball, creating an angle, and then go to our belly. So without a ball, step, play the ball, go to your belly, good. And then go to your left maybe. Left, play the ball, go to your belly, good. And then we want to make sure that we're stepping and trying to cut the ball off and angling our arms. Sometimes we're going to face this way if we're in a hurry or it's an emergency move. But if we can step, cut the ball off, angle our arms.
as we're in the cognitive phase here, we're just learning how to do this, the coach may just just ball some balls in just to get them in the habit of learning how to do this and taking a big step. Okay, good, but go to the floor just so we get in the habit. No, well, actually play the ball. <laughs> okay, so just, good. Okay, so just low to their left or right. Good, but create an angle where you want the ball to go. Okay, take a step, take a step. Okay, good, two hands, but that's a good spr Okay, good. Okay, now, now our target, and we'll talk a little bit more about this later when we get into our, our defensive concepts here, is 10 feet off the net. We want to dig. So the whole point of the sprawl is to create this angle so we can dig the ball off the net. So I want to see you dig and create an angle with your arms. Good. Nice dig high and off the net. Good. Reads in a few minutes, but making sure we're stopped here. Okay, so we're not pre-moving, just be stopped and go get the ball. So left, right, maybe some middle. Okay, nice try. Good. Good. Good, create an angle, nice angle. Good, off the net. Good. 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 Hold on, hold on. So the question is, should we dive or sprawl or should we roll? And uh, I like teaching sprawling for a couple reasons instead of, instead of rolling. One, I don't think we have that much that there, I don't think we have that much court to cover. So we don't really have to go that far on defense if we're in a read. If we're in rotation defense, it might be different. But if we're in a read, most balls are hit within two or three steps from us. Secondly, we get to spend more time focusing on this angle here okay, and less time focusing on what we do afterwards. And I think a lot of good teams roll. I like the sprawl because we can focus again more on our angles. And thirdly, I think it's easier to teach. It's real simple to learn to step, play a ball, and go to my belly, as opposed to learning to sprawl. And if we believe in, okay, let's go back in here. If we believe that it's a mostly a visual game, I want to spend more time in practice on seeing the hitter, creating an angle, less time on anything else. So let's get back in here a little bit. See the hitter. Uh, hold on. Even though we're training here, we still want to mix in once in a while a pancake or something overhead so they're not just in this pattern of just kind of robotic movement here. So, good. Okay, good. Nice angle. Good. There's a... Nice. There's a run. Okay, good. You're cheating, Cassie. Okay, nice try. Okay. Now it's a little bit harder because they don't know what's coming. Okay, our individual defense we're going to work on is overhead defense. And for our system here at TCA, we play a lot shallower in the court. So a lot of teams will play their defenders on this end line here so everything is forward. Therefore, you really don't need a lot of overhead defense. But for us, we're going to play our middle back somewhere in here so we can cover more court, cut down more angles, so the balls that hit the block, we've got to be able to use our hands and other emergency moves. So part of the reason we want to play our middle back a little shallower in the court is, is the first reason is we've done some studies. We've watched a lot of matches, and we realize that more balls get hit here than they get hit anywhere else on the court. So we're going to put somebody where the balls get hit. That's the first reason I think we want to play here. The second reason is, just like a goalkeeper who comes closer to cut off the angles of the, the, the striker in soccer, our middle back person here, because they're close in the court, can cut more angles off. So by standing here, I can get to this ball going to the corner, as opposed to if I'm here, that ball gets to the corner and I can't intercept it. So if I'm close in the court, I can cover more court by, ang by the angles. Secondly, and lastly, it gives me the chance to cover, to have a bigger uh, radius of defense. So instead of standing here, and I'll never get a ball tipped on the 10-foot line, if I stand here, I can go forward and pancake that ball at 10 feet, 
or I can turn around and run or use overhand defense to go to the ball that's behind me. So it gives us a variety of things. If there's a seam in the block, most balls get hit to the middle of the court, so I'm standing here, as opposed to back here where if there's a seam in the block, that ball gets to the floor before I do. Overhead defense. So the first thing we're going to do for defense is we need to learn to use our hands and overhead dig. I like to call that catch and throw. We're not really going to catch it and throw it, but the, the semblance here is that we're going to open our hands because we know that more surface area is greater control. We're going to open our hands and control this ball here. So Keating and Kelly knows what's going to happen, so her hands are coming up. So if I'm in this drill, even though we're working on defense with Kelly's hands, I'm still going to tip so that she's thinking about everything that can happen and I'm going to throw it over her head okay? and then I might even hit a ball to her side or I might hit there. So now she doesn't know what's going to happen and she's learning and reading while she's learning. So when she does use her hands, her hands are neutral, she's going to open her hands and grab the ball and throw it up instead of trying to deflect the ball. She's going to grab it and throw it up. Okay, good. Okay, good. So she's going to get her hands up. Keep going. And we want to we want to create surface space. More surface space, better control. So it's none of this, it's none of this, it's none of this. It's this big platform here to wrap her mitts around the ball and to catch it and throw it up because we're not going to call a double contact on this first ball. Okay, good. Now, Adam, as a coach here, has got to mix it in because you're giving her overhead balls, so she's getting in that rhythm. So once in a while, okay, good. Open your hands. Catch it. And there's a tip just to make sure she's not cheating on that ball. Maybe it might be called a lift because it's a slower ball. So on balls that are going way over her head, I don't want to do this with an open hand because they might call a lift. Because a hard ball we can catch because it's hard driven, they'll call a double, which won't be called. The slow ball, maybe we want to use a tomahawk. So we're going to bring our hands together. It's the opposite of this platform here, and we're going to tomahawk here. So slow and kind of back here. Okay, but a little bit overhead more. So, so okay, good. And again, a little bit harder so she can't just set it, because that ball would be an easy ball to set. So, yeah, again, there. So we want some sort of emergency move here so that she can still tomahawk. And then you've got to mix in a tip or so so she's not just running back there, too. So there's a tip, just so we know she's not cheating, but the emphasis is still on a, on a tomahawk, and our target is off the net. Jump in here, so catch a breather. Is a fist, and this is a ball that goes off the block and is going deep, and we don't have time to run it down, but we might just want to jump and use a fist. So I'm put these in. So, so again, we're going to work on a fist here, but first we're going to work on a pancake. Good. So Lauren's reading and not cheating. And then we're going to work on something like that. Maybe a fist. And our target is off the net there. Okay, so again, something maybe there. Okay, that. So that's a perfect example of a ball that we can't run down. So instead of trying to run it down 25 feet, if she jumps, she might be able to intercept it before it goes behind her. So here, and there's a... Okay, and we just noticed that Lauren took a step backwards because she knew the fist is coming. So that's why we got to train all the skills at one time to prevent them from cheating. So that way when we do this, fist, there it is right there. So we got a fist right there. And again, it's an emergency move. Our girls in the line here. So now that we've learned the different variations of how to play balls overhand and underhand and go in one line. This is a great drill we do just to, to introduce all these skills. So we're going to focus mostly on overhead, but once in a while mix in a tip or a sprawl. And uh, we're going to mix in tomahawk, fisty, pancakes, flipper, everything goes pretty much now. Okay, good. Okay, good. Go, 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 go. Good. Good. Okay, we haven't, hold on a second. And we're going to talk about our target in about two minutes. But we want to dig balls again to the middle of the court and off the net. Okay, we're digging balls tight. So let's keep that focus too. Good, off the net. 
Good. Go to your belly. Go all the way through. Okay, that's probably a run through. We didn't talk about that, but... Okay, good. That's a set. Good. The last one is a ball that you can run to. It's not that hard. It's exactly what it sounds like, a run to. So the ball is there. We don't just fall, but we run, create an angle, play the ball. So maybe let's go left, right, and some behind them. But, but give it to them from here so, it's, so you can mix in some spiking too. Run, run, run. Good. Now, try to stay on your feet if you can. Okay. If you have to go to the floor, go to the floor. But try to stay on your feet for a run too, because we just want to run to the ball. R good. Run. Good. Just a run too. Good. And it makes like some tips so they can run too. Run, 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 run. Good. Nice sprawl. If you can stay on your feet, stay on your feet. Run, 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 run. Good. Okay. Good. All right. So that's what we call a run two, where they've got to learn to run to some balls. All these tools on how to play defense. So now let's talk about reading because that's pretty important. And I think a lot of us are teaching our, a lot of coaches will teach our players before the ball gets hit to pre-hop, to, to jump, to do this sort of stuff. We just want to be stopped and look at the set and then the hitter and then the ball. Okay, so we want less movement, more eyes on the ball and the hitter. So you got to look at the hitter. So a drill that I like to do is, so we know how to play defense now. We have the skill. We stop and see. And how do I know they're seeing is because I'm going to hit a variety of balls and I'm going to try to trick them now to make sure that they're stopped and they can see. So I'm going to hit this. Okay, good. Okay, so they can see. Yeah, next person, let's just rotate. So they can... Good, and there's no extra movement. So here, okay, she's moving forward on a ball that was hit deep, so you gotta be stopped. Run, 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 run. Good, nice run, okay? And what else I can do is I can toss and swing and miss, but Kelly didn't move. So if the ball doesn't get hit, she doesn't need to move. So now she's reading instead of just guessing. And that ball goes deep, okay? That's an easy ball overhead. Okay, be, stop and read. Tip. Okay, there's a pancake. Good. And swing and miss, and now you're moving. So because she's moving like this, the ball hits the block, changes direction, you can't get that ball. So you need to just be stopped and not move. Good. Be stopped and just read. Be, ball goes there. Now it's an easy move for her because she's not guessing. She's reading. Okay, now Lydia's guessing. You're ready to run there. You need to be in a position where you can play the ball in a variety of different maneuvers. Good. So she's just reading and looking. And there's a tip. Okay, good. So now we've got range. So our middle back can dig balls on the 10-foot line if it's a pancake or balls that are 15 feet off the court like this. Good. So now our middle back has some range. Or swing and miss. Okay, good. Okay, or that. So in our system, a perfect dig in our system now is what we call 2010 middle. And 2010 middle is a ball that's dug 20 feet high. And how do we know what 20 feet high is? We don't, but it's just nice and high. And 10 feet off the net. And we want the ball 10 feet off the net. So if we miss, it goes to 4 or 5 feet. But if we aim for 4 or 5 feet and we miss, the ball goes over the net. And we don't ever want to pass it over the net. So we're going to aim somewhere around 10 feet. And then we're going to aim to the middle of the court. Because again, if we aim right and we miss right, it's here and now we have no back set. But if we aim middle and we miss right, it ends up here and we're still in business here. So we want to try to dig 20, 10, middle. Okay, so Adam's going to put a variety of balls in and we're going to focus on 20, 10, middle here. Good. Maybe a little higher. 